Hello, this is Wong Kili. I'm a classical saxophonist. Today, I want to talk to you about how to play a musical vibrato on saxophone. It is my favorite topic, and I try my best to give you useful tips to master this technique. So, please make sure to watch until the very end. In my opinion, vibrato is the most difficult technique for saxophone. It's because Vibrato is the first thing that goes out of control if you don't play the instrument for a few days. Because of that, I always start my practice with vibrato warm ups. Also, I have to mention that in recent years, saxophone pedagogy is not really focused on mastering vibrato. Partially because we are more focused on contemporary repertoire because there are higher demands to learn those music which do not require the traditional use of a vibrato. But I still think it's musically very powerful to move listeners with slow, simple melodies. And vibrato plays a very important role in that. Now, what is a musical vibrato? Obviously, there are many kinds of vibrato. Sometimes it's slow, sometimes fast, wide, and narrow. But I want to focus on more of faster and narrower vibrato. Because it's more difficult to do and more difficult to control. And I also want to emulate a type of vibrato used by string players and singers. In saxophone, we use our jaw to create a vibrato by changing our embouchure. Often, I hear teachers tell students to use wow 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 syllables to create a vibrato, but I like to use different one, which brings us to the tip number one. Use ya 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 ya. Both wow wow and ya ya suggest pitch fluctuations, but wow wow is pronounced by the movement of the lips. On the other hand, the ya ya is pronounced by the movement of a jaw, which resembles the actual movement of saxophone vibrato. Another benefit of using ya ya syllable is that the pitch fluctuation is much narrower. In general, you don't want to have the wider vibrato because it's gonna sound unmusical and uncontrolled. So let's first practice saying ya 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 for the vibrato. Tip number two, start and end on the lower side of the wave or pitch. When you're doing a vibrato and changing the pitch, you might have heard that you are supposed to raise the pitch instead of lowering the pitch. And this is certainly true in classical style of music, unless composers specifically indicate to do the lowering of the pitch. But the truth is not really about raising or lowering the pitch. It's really about which side of the pitch you start and end the vibrato. And this is very important to realize in order to have a musical vibrato. Whether you're thinking lowering or raising the pitch, actual pitch fluctuations are identical. So if you start from the higher side of the pitch and try to raise the pitch, you can't really do that. You have to only go lower, which will sound flat. Conversely, if you start from the lower side of the pitch, it will sound more natural and musical. So here's an example. So you always want to make sure to start and end from the lower side of the pitch. In order to do that, you have to have a more relaxed embouchure. If your embouchure is already too tight, there's not enough space to go upwards in the pitch. So if you're doing the vibrato from that position, you will going to sound flat and rather unnatural. So the default position of your embouchure should be relaxed in order to have a more musical and natural vibrato. Tip number three. Practice vibrato with the metronome in tempo 72 to 8 beats per minute. Consistency of the wave is very important for the musical vibrato, so you always want to make sure to practice with metronome. For the fast vibrato, make sure to be able to play 416 notes in the tempo of 72 to 80 beats per minute. If that's too fast, you can start to work from the slower tempo. The reason why you want to include non vibrato in this exercise is to make sure that you are starting and ending on the lower part of the pitch.
Once you can do this comfortably, start the vibrato from the beginning of the note. Tip number four, use varying etude to practice vibrato. Now it's time to apply these skills into real music. My personal favorite is using varying etude, especially the slow ones. Marcel Mew and Daniel Defaye help their students to master vibrato using these varying etude. And I'd like to continue this French tradition of pedagogy. To be able to play these phrasings musically with vibrato is very challenging. But if you can apply these short melodies with vibrato freely, there is no way to utilize vibrato musically as you imagine in our actual repertoire. So I always start my practice with vibrato using this varying etude so that I could keep up with my technique and make sure that I still have the control. Now, when practicing varying etude, first start playing the phrase with a vibrato so you can be sure how you want to take the direction of the phrase. Then add the vibrato. Here's how it goes. Tip number five, make sure to start the vibrato from the beginning of the note. Often I hear students play a phrase without vibrato and then suddenly add the vibrato in the middle. Unless composers specifically ask you to do that, it will sound rather unsophisticated or lazy. Tip number six, do not end with vibrato in the very strong ending of the phrase. When a phrase has a very strong ending, you want to be very careful how to use vibrato. Often ending with vibrato in that moment will sound rather flat or lazy. So it's sometimes better not to use vibrato. Here's one example. In another situation, you sustain a note in a louder dynamics, and yes, you want to use a vibrato, but at the very last moment, you want to make sure to cut the phrase without vibrato. So here's another example from the very ending of the first movement of a Creston sonata. Now finally the last tip, and this last tip is a very advanced pro tip, but I think it's super useful. So here's how it goes. Tip number seven, use vibrato as a color, not as an expression. Now let me explain. There are two kinds of vibrato. One is expressive vibrato, which is the one we've been talking about actually, and the other one is the colorful vibrato. This type of vibrato may not be clearly audible, but it is used to maintain the same color throughout the phrase, which result in the better phrasing and connectivity. 
So I want to show you one example from Iber Concertino da Camera. Now, in the first version, I did not use vibrato for the pickup quarter notes of the phrase, which are B, B, C sharp, and G. These notes might have sound a little more emphasized or different in the color compared to the other notes. In the second version, I used a vibrato, a tiny vibrato, to match the color with other notes, so you might have this version to be more connected or even. I'm not saying which version is better or worse, I think they're simply different interpretations. But I still believe this is very powerful to use colorful vibrato in order to connect a line or in order to even out the color. So I hope this could be a useful tool to advance your musical learnings. Thank you very much for watching until the very end. I hope it was helpful for you. Please let me know what you think in the comment. And I'll be making more tutorial videos like this in the near future, so please make sure to subscribe. See you next time.